how is the economy of maharashtra doing which areas are prosperous and which are poor where does the economic growth really come from if we take out mumbai from it will maharashtra's economy be still big enough i answer these questions in my new series kys that is know your state and this episode is special because of another reason i will be recording this in marathi language too for my folks in maharashtra this will be an episode of ekon galli marathi podcast the marathi economics podcast which has been running for one and a half year now usually it is an audio podcast but this will be special as i will have the same video running along with me speaking in marathi those of you who are comfortable listening in marathi can go there the link is given in the description and also share it with folks who will be interested in watching this in marathi language maharashtra's gdp was 31 trillion rupees in fy22 if we are just for inflation that is the real gdp was 20 trillion rupees it's the highest in the country but what if i remove mumbai's gdp what's your hunch will it still remain the largest state economy no based on the nominal gdp data telangana will become the largest state but maharashtra's rank will go down to number 2 That's trivia number 1 of this episode. We will be exploring the state's economy together and there will be numerous such trivia coming your way. So keep watching but before you proceed hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. So to begin with the analysis let us find out how the economy is divided into different sectors. Roughly the primary sector contributes 17%, secondary sector contributes 26% and the tertiary sector contributes around 57% to the gross value added or GVA of the state. These are the real GVAs which means these are inflation adjusted figures. The primary sector includes agriculture, livestock, forestry, fishing and mining. The secondary sector includes manufacturing, utilities and construction. The tertiary sector includes all kinds of services like repair trade hotels and restaurants transportation communication financial services and any other kind of professional service gva and gdp are kind of two different measures gva is gross value added which means how much value has been added to the initial form of good or service state gva means additions of all the sector gvas once we get gva we add taxes and reduce subsidies and then we get gdp so whenever you want to see sector wise data you should look at gva otherwise for regular purposes you can use gdp figures so in the case of maharashtra the services sector accounts for more than half of state gva 10 years ago these percentages were primary sector 18% so only 1% has been decreased during this period secondary sector was 31% there's a decrease of 5% while tertiary sector has added 6 percentage points usually it is considered good when the economy progresses from agriculture to manufacturing and from manufacturing to services but has this been a good type of transition in maharashtra let's find out there are few sectors like mining and manufacturing where the gdp has declined in absolute terms after covid-19 and has not regained the pre covid levels we can see stark differences in the two sectors one is manufacturing for fy19 real manufacturing gva was 3.75 trillion rupees in fy22 it was 3.4 trillion rupees this was a shocker similarly the trade hotels and restaurant sector hasn't recovered from the covid yet in fy19 its gva was 1.6 trillion rupees and in fy22 it is 1.5 trillion rupees to understand this better i did a simple math i assumed the values of all the sectors and sub sectors for fy12 to be 100 then based on the growth rates of every sector i recalculated these values of the next year in this chart you can see fy12 where every sector's value is 100 then the other bar is for fy19 and then there's the latest data of fy22 you can see mining manufacturing construction and trade hotels and restaurant sectors are still behind the pre covid levels whenever we say that the economy should progress from agriculture to manufacturing to services it doesn't mean that the absolute values should be lower the transition should be such that all the sectors grow but the tertiary sector grows faster right now 
द ट्रांजिशन विच वी आर सीन इज नॉट अल्दी वन एटलीस्ट इन द लास्ट फ्यू इयर्स फ्रेंकली द स्टेट इज येट टू रिकवर फ्रॉम द कोविड शॉक एटलीस्ट फॉर अ फ्यू सेक्टर्स एंड पॉलिसी मेकर्स नीड टू लुक एट दिस वी नो दैट द पॉलिटिशियंस वर बिजी हॉर्स ट्रेडिंग ड्यूरिंग दिस पीरियड बट हियर्स वॉट द स्टेट हैज टू सफर इट्स द कॉस्ट ऑफ लॉस टाइम पॉलिटिकल विल एंड एक्शन However we can still hope that by FY23 we might have recovered considering the gaps are small enough to get filled within a year FY23 data has not been released yet but whenever it is released one should keep an eye on these numbers and you see that's the another problem with the state data it releases after a much lag as of now we have FY22 data but if i want to know about my state's latest stuff is then i can't we can get broad numbers but not these kinds of details even there is no such thing as time table for central government for the central government all the statistical data gets released on specified dates without fail well not all the data some are hidden but at least the gdp data and all get released on time the ministry releases the calendar well in advance For states, forget the calendar. Many states do not update their websites with the latest data for years. So that is one thing that we need to change. If every state wants to become a trillion-dollar economy by itself and raise funds through bonds, external investors, and so on and so forth, then this is the least they should be able to do. Because that shows data transparency and accountability, which is seriously lacking in Indian states. Okay, enough of my rant. back to the state level data now i present two charts of growth rates first is from fy12 to fy19 and the other from fy19 to fy22 why fy19 because we just saw how we have not yet reached pre pandemic levels in the case of some sectors this is the sector wise growth rates from fy12 to fy19 that is for 7 years it shows that state gdp that is the gva in this case grew at 6% cagr these are again in real term that is adjusted for inflation all the services related sectors like trade hotels financial services real estate and all the services have grown above 6% cagr with real estate and professional services registering the fastest growth of almost 9% manufacturing too has grown above 6% it's a fair growth but all other sectors have performed poorly in the case of farming gva has declined now let us find out what happened in the last few years after covid this is the most depressing chart state gva has not grown even 2% manufacturing has contracted mining construction and trade sectors too have contracted only agriculture has seen growth you must be remembering the days after covid only agriculture and allied activities sector did well throughout the year due to lockdown in other parts of the country this 13% increase in farming is the result of the same thing if you are in maharashtra then this chart should disturb you as the economy has been underperforming and that will impact your life too now let us move on to understand how the districts of maharashtra are performing You might know the richest district in Maharashtra. No points for guessing that. But which one is the poorest? Any guesses? This is the map of all the districts in Maharashtra based on the real per capita GDP. The dark blue color represents the highest per capita income and the dark red represents the lowest per capita income. In between we have the shades of blue and red. The top 5 are Mumbai, Thane, Pune, Nagpur and Raigad. in that order all in shades of blue here data for thane means thane and palgar districts together and mumbai means mumbai city plus suburbs together in further maps i have either kept palgar and mumbai suburb blank that's gray color or i have added same data as thane or mumbai city whichever is applicable most of the times they are clubbed together the darkest red can be seen at the top that's nandurbar district the poorest district of maharashtra the real per capita gdp that is the adjusted for inflation is 79000 rupees per annum which by the way is twice the bihar's average income bihar's real per capita gdp for fy22 is around 35000 rupees 
One thing that you can notice in this map is that only the top 5 districts are in blue, rest all are in red. By the way, the tool which I have used to make this map has some spelling mistakes. For example, Nandurbar is spelt as Nandubar. I am not responsible for any spelling mistakes or map related mistakes. Uh, I have only added relevant data beside each district name. So yeah, back to the data. This map highlights the stark difference between the rich and the poor districts. There are two tables too. The bigger table has the list of districts whose per capita income is lesser than India's per capita income. India's, okay, not Maharashtra's. So we are saying that folks in these districts earn below average income than any other Indian. The only saving grace is that they earn more than an average Bihari or probably some other state. That's all. The smaller table shows that the top five districts are the only districts where the average income is higher than the average income of the state. Here we are talking about the state and not the country. Maharashtra's per capita income is 1,62,231 rupees and people living in those five districts have an average income about this. And there are only five districts where we see such a thing. The rest of the districts have very poor earnings. Let's see what happens if we remove these top five districts from the state average. Then Maharashtra's per capita income falls by 25%. From 1,60,000, it comes to 1,22,000. It is still a good number, but you can see how drastic the fall was. That means the incomes are concentrated in those five districts only. Thane became richer due to its proximity to Mumbai. Raigad became richer because of its proximity to Pune as well as Mumbai. But beyond this cluster in the western part, the fruits of development haven't reached other districts. Nagpur is another important and richer district, but its development has not benefited the districts nearby as we saw with Pune and Mumbai. Since a lot of it is in a red color, I deleted the data for top 5 districts, which are in blue, to understand where other districts stand exactly. Here's the chart of district-wise per capita income for FY22 other than top 5 districts of Maharashtra. Now you can see that districts closer to Mumbai and Pune and the southern regions are richer compared to others. That includes districts of Kolhapur, Sindhudur, Nashik, Ratnagiri, Solapur, Satara, Sangli, Ahmednagar and Aurangabad. At the same time, you can see some blue shades around Nagpur districts in Varda and Chandrapur. So, after top 5 districts, the western Maharashtra, the southern Maharashtra and a couple of districts in Vidarbha region are rich. The central Maharashtra is still backward. I will analyze another data that will add more value to what we are discussing right now and that is the electricity data. We have data for FY21 and the breakup based on the usage is also available. So in this chart, I present two maps. First is for the per capita electricity consumption for domestic use. That is how much every person on average use the electricity in its own house for running fans, tube lights, TV, fridge, etc. We find that most electricity consumption happens in Mumbai, Pune, surroundings and then Nagpur, the typical top 5 ones. It is the lowest in most central districts of Jalna, Parbani, Hingoli and Bid. And Nandurbar is also on the list. Now, the map on the right hand side is for industrial use. How much electricity is consumed on average by industries? Here we see that Raigad has the highest consumption. Raigad is an industrial district and we can see it just by looking at the electricity consumption data. After Raigad, Palghar and Jalna districts join the list and then Pune after a long gap. Rest of the state is way behind these districts. This shows that manufacturing is also concentrated in these specific districts only. Next is the electricity usage for commercial and agricultural purposes. This is something that shows the reality of the state. The commercial map is just like any other map which we have previously seen where the top 5 districts contribute a lot to the usage of electricity. But in the case of agriculture, you will see that the most usage is done in the central Maharashtra. The coast is full red, denoting very little agricultural usage. Solapur and Usmanabad are at the top, followed by Ahmednagar and Hingoli districts. 
These charts show that this area is largely agrarian. We can also see how much agriculture and allied activities contributed to FY22. Hingoli and Washim are a top two agrarian districts. Lastly, we will see which districts have shown the highest growth in the per capita income in the last decade, that is from FY12 to FY22. Here we can see something astonishing. Hingoli and Washim, which we just talked about, have shown the highest growth in the last 10 years, followed by Buldana, Yavatmal and Ahmednagar. Their growth rates are even higher than the average growth rate of India. Surprisingly, the top 5 districts have shown lower growth than even the average growth rates of Maharashtra. This is normal or one should expect that. Usually the poorer states or regions grow faster due to lower base and richer ones grow slower. However, it should be seen what has driven this growth in these districts. We see that agriculture is the main growth contributor of these districts and that is a bit worrying. Ideally, people should move out of agriculture and transcend to manufacturing and services. But these districts are much dependent on agriculture according to many data points that we saw in the today's video. The government must focus on these districts actively. Next year, there will be elections, not only central government, but the state government elections too. We can ask these questions to our representatives to start with. First, what are the plans to develop central Maharashtra? Second, what are the plans to boost manufacturing in the state? I can just go on and on with different types of data analysis, but we need to stop somewhere before you start to yawn. Therefore, I would like to ask you, what more information would you like to know about this amazing state or a specific district for that matter? Also, which state's data analysis should I do the next? I am waiting for your response. Keep liking, sharing and subscribing. See you next week.